My name is Shally Gupton Barnes. I'm with the Poor People's Campaign. I'm the policy director of the Poor People's Campaign and the Cairo Center. And we come out of Poor People's Organizing um, for, for many, many years. And uh, having a guaranteed adequate income is one of the longtime demands of the campaign. Existed. And this march actually helped fuel the need, the recognition that we needed to have an organization that was all about uh, building grassroots support for basic income and building coalitions of organizations who are out there doing amazing work for economic justice, racial and gender justice, environmental justice. We know the intersection of economic justice and basic income covers so many different parts of our lives. And so Income Movement does a lot of work in that space. My name is Diane Pagin. And I co-founded the Basic Income March with James Felton Keith in 2019. But I want to let everybody here know we're not just a once a year event. We're going to have many, many events throughout the year. We're going to have uh, events that are both virtual and in person. And we look forward to working with all of you and pulling from the talent that we have. One thing that happened this year that was amazing, we went from 13 mayors that were part of Mayors for Guaranteed Income to now almost 60. 60 mayors across the country from Los Angeles to Madison to Newark support basic income. <laughs> the second thing that happened at a federal level that is absolutely amazing and, and everybody we talk to that's been doing this work in guaranteed basic income for decades has said, if a year ago you had told us that millions of families would be receiving a monthly guaranteed income, we would have been like, no way. There's no way that's going to happen. And it happened. We have the child tax credit that was passed. J July 15th was the first set of checks that went out to millions and millions of families. This is huge. We know it should be permanent. It's got to be permanent. All right, check it out, folks. I'm real proud because you know what? Yeah. I'm going to October. Uh, to testify on people with, on disability rights uh, that I hope y'all come with me. And just so you know, I led the People's Party and the Yang Gang to uh, Schumer's office and brought 10,000 signatures there. I'm still working with the People's Party of New York and I invite y'all to work with us again. I am still a representative of that organization. I come here before you to work with you and make new big things happen. So let's work together. I want you all to keep in the back of your minds that the income movement, we, we dropped the word basic from it, but the income movement more broadly is about the idea that income is a basic human right. No one should be unable to live and eat and take care of basic needs. And this is separate from social safety net programs. Those are all great programs. We think this is a plus and not an either or. So I just want to establish that for anyone who doesn't know what the income movement is about. This is about us having a right to plan our lives, a right to dignity, and a right to be able to afford to live in this place, in this time, because we make it dope, period. Being a parent is by far 
the most rewarding thing that has ever happened to me. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. But parenting is work. Caretaking is work. Volunteering in our community is work. None of this shows up in the GDP. Unpaid work, it's all unpaid. And right now that garners, garners very little glory, if any. As we know, new data came out in the last few weeks about hunger in America. And it showed that it was skyrocketing, skyrocketing, skyrocketing. And then the federal government did two things. Number one, gave low-income people more money in SNAP, what used to be called food stamps, and number two, gave them cash. This racist, classist stereotype, but oh my God, if you give low-income people cash, they're just gonna waste it. Yeah, they're gonna waste it on housing. Yeah, they're gonna waste it on food. Yeah, they're gonna waste it on childcare. Yeah, they're gonna waste it on the MTA card. We understand that just like wealthy people want autonomy, over how they spend their money. Low well, income people need autonomy because they know what's best for their own families. I wanted to start by just sharing with you how much I connect to the work of the Universal Basic Income Movement. I grew up in public housing in El Paso, Texas in a border town. And there my family had food stamps and we had government health care, and we had so much support that we were able to be stable. Those things are no longer in full breath for so many families, and you've already heard Joel and Shane talk about how hard it is to raise a family in this city. Fast forward, became the first person in my family to go to college and learn about how I could actually take this activism and my experiences and move with people. And the immigrant community has been something, as a Mexican-American, something that I wanted to do a lot of work around. In the city council, when I became the first Mexican-American elected in the city council's history, I learned how important it was to connect to that voice that had no voice in the city council. I'm Theo Demo. I'm so honored to be with you guys standing advocating for universal basic income. Most of you have no idea who I am and are probably wondering what a 14-year-old knows about anything, especially making money. You'd be surprised how much teens know, especially lifelong New Yorkers like myself. We know that when our parents fight, it's usually about money. And when they fight about money, they're more scared than angry. Because they don't know if they have enough money to pay rent, buy food, and educate us, their kids. They are scared they won't be able to provide us kids with the lives they want for us. And the, and the pandemic made these fears reality for so many people. We saw how unequally the pandemic, the pandemic affected people based on how much money they had. My generation is already facing so much uncertainty because of climate change. We don't even know if the earth will be habitable when we grow up. At least if guaranteed basic income, families will know for certain they won't become homeless when they lose their jobs or get COVID or whatever disease comes next. And I know you want us to take risk. You want us to innovate, invent the next big thing, solve big problems. Universal basic income is the safety net my generation needs to save the earth and to make this city and this country fairer, smarter, and healthier. Thank you, let's make history. Because of the generous unemployment insurance, many of us experienced for the first time a secure and steady cash flow. So, did we sit around drinking beer and watching Netflix? Okay, we did some of that. <laughs> but most of the time, we worked. We worked, we worked, we worked for the things we loved. We bought new instruments, we wrote film scripts, we started installation projects, we hosted neighborhood concerts, we finished poetry books. The unemployment insurance worked exactly as I predicted UBI would. To me, this was proof that UBI would unleash the output potential of creators. So this song that I'm gonna sing for you guys is a little personal to me, but I feel like it'll resonate with all of us. It's called Rise Up, all right? You're broken down and tired of living life on the merry-go-round. And you can't find the fire, but I see it now, we gonna work it out and move mountains. We're 
and work it out and move mountains and now rise up rise like the day I'll rise up rise unafraid I'll rise up and now do it a thousand times again and now rise up I'll let the waves I'll rise up in spite of the ache I'll rise up and now do it a thousand times again for you Uh, but we ran a basic income trial in 10 states across this country and gave people a basic income for two and a half years and we filmed what happened. So we're very, very excited to share that with you guys uh, as soon as it's ready. The poem is called YUBI and half of the lines are yours. Every time I give you, I say a line, you're going to respond with, this is why YUBI. You say it with me? This is why YUBI. We're going to go back and forth. And, and, and let me hear you. Right. How are you going to lose that student debt? How you afford that trip to the vet? How are you going to feed your family healthy? On tax breaks going to the wealthy? What you got in indentured servitude? And what if you are unemployed? Boss replaced you with a droid. This is why UBI. And if your job don't pay you fair. This is why UBI. Another project that I'm working on now is a startup called Comingle. Uh, it's comingle.us. And basically we're trying to sort of sidestep the government and make uh, an online voluntary UBI for anyone who wants to join and have it all funded by the, the members themselves. You know, sort of like its own tax system. and and UBI system. Uh, tell me a little bit, uh, when did you start to get involved with the income movement or basic income? So, by accident on purpose, because everything happens for a reason, I met Diane at one of my shows. I was waiting to start my performance for the night and we met at Star Bar and she was telling us a little bit about UBI. I actually am on a podcast too, so we wanted to get a lot of this information out after meeting her because it was really crucial to a community of artists like myself. Yeah. I'm Swindle, I'm a troll from the internet. I've been cancelled by the US government for knowing too much. So, uh, the microchip that they imported into me through the vaccine, it actually shocks me when I talk. So I have to fight through this pain every time I talk, but the things I have to say are too important to, you know, I have to sacrifice myself. Here we are. It's the third annual Basic Income March. I'm with New Leaf Democrats. I'm here with the Income Movement and a bunch of other wonderful people from all over the city and even all over the country. We're coming to uh, show their support for basic income. You know, it's time that the government actually um, makes people feel like they have a stake in society. I think that it's too long we've had completely unaccountable governance, zero transparency, and where's all the money going, right? It's like you have these mean te means tested uh, welfare programs that are meant to help people, but you know, it's nearly impossible to get into them half the time. Universal basic income just makes so much more sense when it comes to actually putting money in people's hands. I really enjoyed marching with the, the Cobras, the Marching Cobras, and like 
you know, shouting all those chants and coming here and hearing all the people speak. It was really like invigorating and honestly like um, rejuvenating. I feel like all the energy I put in over the couple of months, just like, I, 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 people gave it back to me. I feel just like pumped, I feel good. We've been doing these marches during COVID and so they're not exactly the sort of crowd we want to have, exactly the sort of sort of communal hugging and sharing, et cetera, that we want to have. But the, the positive thing is people are still excited enough and still enthusiastic enough to come out in masks, march up a hill, have a bunch of conversations about the different facets of income inclusivity. And so, you know, we know that, you know, that this is sustainable, you know, what we're doing. And so I'm, I'm encouraged by this year and last year in particular because of the pandemic and how it has played on to us. And so, you know, that's what's going on now. What's going on now is, you know, we're in 40 cities now and, you know, people with real political power and legislative power know about us now and they are gonna make decisions based on what we say now because they know that we can have a play on the sorts of votes that they can get later, not now. And as a result, we're gonna keep exerting our power and keep trying to grow the movement and telling more micro stories about people's, you know, gender and culture and, and income and class experience and immigrant status and, and language and you name it so that um, we have more allies as we um, try to build real economic inclusion. And I think, you know, that's the work. That's what I'm, I'm happy to do. Even if it was five of us out here, I'd be happy to just do that because I think this sort of movement and this sort of issue filters through every other issue. From, from two years ago to now, we have a lot more understanding of uh, universality and the idea that there are many different ways to get money and um, that it doesn't have to just be that you get a job and you work a wage, that there are legitimate ways to get money besides someone agreeing to pay you a wage. So I think that that's really powerful. I came in this morning from Connecticut at like 5 a.m. 5 a.m. train ride and literally just came in and met up with all of my friends at the New Leaf Dems. <laughs> Hi now. No. I loved Andrew the Presidential, but I really got involved in his mayoral campaign. Um, I was a social media lead for his campaign. I loved working with it. It was all volunteer based, but just absolutely loved the campaign. I love everything that he stood for. Um, and that really got me kind of involved in like universal basic income and all of his ideals. Is that like you just see your local neighborhood, your local street, you know, wherever it's like uh, transportation or UBI or even just like, hey, maybe we want less trash in our street. Maybe we want better trash pickup. You know, we remember like some more efficient, more responsive kind of um, bureaucracy, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, more for small businesses, you know, more for everybody.